Are you getting enough exercise in menopause? Are you wondering the answer to that question too? Today, I'm answering a question from Kate. And if you're not familiar, in a very recent episode, I did a roundup asking for your questions. So if you have a question, something that you wish you knew the answer to about strength training, specifically during menopause, or something that you know now that you wish you'd known a whole lot sooner, I'd love your question. I'm going to link to that prior episode where I gave you a sneak peek, well, a sneak listen to the introduction for my next book. And in it, I asked for your questions. So I'll post that in the show notes today. But for now, I wanted to answer a question that came out of that roundup from Kate that I just couldn't wait on. The question is this, I've been following your advice, focusing on strength training twice a week, typically Wednesday and Saturday for ample recovery time. My question is this, if I typically do 30 minute lifting routines, focusing on whole body strength with eight to 20 pound weights. Is 30 minutes enough? Signed, Kate. Kate, thanks so much for asking. I'm going to get to the answer to that question in just a moment. And for now, I want to let you know that if you're ridden with a lot of questions about strength training and your hormones and wondering how do you marry the two, knowing you need to exercise, you actually want to exercise because it's one of the ways you negate your stress, helps you feel in control and sleep a little bit better, but you don't know what to do. If you're at all like a woman I had a phone call with just today, who's all over the board and said, this is just not like me, but I don't know if I should be lifting weights, if I should be going for a walk, if I should be doing high intensity exercise, doing the boxing, going swimming instead, doing yoga. I have no idea. And I start something and then I think, no, 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 I shouldn't be doing that. So I don't know what to do at all. If that sounds you, any of that resonates, right now is the time to act on it. The 10 day Hot Not Bother Challenge is something I've offered just twice. It was actually born during the pandemic as a way to help women who were not only going through menopause, but going through it at a time we were all going through a major life change as in the pandemic. And it's been extremely popular. And this is our biggest one yet, but you only have a few more days to get in. We start June 1st, which means after that, you can't play anymore. So you've got this weekend, you've got until May 30th to get in, and then the doors close, and we have no plans yet to offer it again in the future. I'm sure we will, but I don't know when. So if you've got these questions now, let's get you started. I don't know about you, but I love summer, and actually I want to love me and my energy in summer. I'll put the link to that in the show notes too. Let's dive into this. So I want to tackle Kate's question because it's it's actually very common. And yet you may have found this true. She asked a couple questions in her question and I want to unravel all of them. But first I want to ask you a question. What if the question you should ask is not whether it's enough exercise, but whether you're doing too much exercise. So this is a nod to my friend, Stu Schaefer, who's a fellow personal trainer who also works with midlife women. And hey, let's face it, a lot of trainers work with midlife women, but he and I both really specialize in focusing on you. He told this story, so it's not really mine to tell, but I'm going to share, and I just gave him credit. So the reality is he was working with a client who was making progress, and then suddenly she stalled and was no longer making the kind of progress she wanted to and wasn't losing weight anymore. And here's why. 
she had started on her own to do more cardio. She was doing more classes, more cardio, more this, more that, thinking more, more, and more is better. You know where I'm going with this because we all go there. And the truth is, most likely, so I'm not looking under the hood, Stu didn't share any lab tests, but we can probably both surmise that she was gaining cortisol weight. More is not better. So when your body is going through hormonal changes, what you did when you were 25 and 35 and maybe even just six months ago, because that's how rapidly our hormones can change when we're on that perimenopause roller coaster, that may not work anymore. That may be outside of your Goldilocks sweet spot. It may be too much for the right now moment that you're in. When your body is going through all those hormone changes, you are most susceptible, hard to spit that out, most susceptible to the negative effects of cortisol, the negative effects of stress, in other words. So as your estrogen levels go down, your cortisol level rises. What happens when cortisol rises, cortisol means when you're under stress, your body really kind of freezes. And a lot of times when we're younger, sometimes that kind of stress and anxiety before a project or got to give a speech, it's nervous energy. And we may have found at one point it made us lose weight. A lot of times in menopause, your reaction to stressors are going to change and your body will tend to store fat. And that's actually in part, not just cortisol, but insulin. Again, I'll link to a very recent podcast episode that I did. Insulin can be a problem, even for those of us who really never had problems before. Blood sugar tends to rise as we age and not just from 20 to 30 to 40, but specifically this menopause special golden age that we're in, we just have to be a little bit more careful with it. We can regroup. We've got to change what we're doing in our nutrition, in our sleep, in our stress levels, and exercise is part of that because exercise is stress on your body. So full circle coming back to Stu's client. When he got her to cut down on all of those extra aerobic classes and activities she was doing, she began to lose the weight. Now, did she trust him at first? Hell no. Pardon my French. But right? I mean, because that's not intuitive. What do you mean? I'm going to lose weight if I do less? I know it's hard to believe. I'm sure Stu has the hand to the forehead slap going on a lot too. It's a hard message to get across. He and I both love exercise. It's hard for us. But when you see results, when you feel results, when you get results, you start to become a believer. But I will tell you this. I love endurance exercise. I love long bike rides. I love long runs and long swims. (laughs) I love to string them together and they call that a triathlon. But my body's hormone status right now does not love me back when I do that. So my reality is right now that I have to very occasionally treat myself to that little binge. And then I have to get right back on the bandwagon and say, that was nice, but I'm only visiting. I can't go there regularly because even though my mind wants it, even though I enjoy it and I love it right now, my hormone status is rebelling when I do that. And listen, if I could cry while I'm podcasting, I would be crying right now because that is really hard for me. And I know, girlfriends, there are some of you out there who are like, yes, that's so me. I want to do that too. And I can't. I get it. We've just got to find some other things. You've got to go on that SUP for the afternoon. You've got to take up golf, those things that you can do all day. Go hiking with friends. And and I say that with friends because then you won't be tempted to push harder than you should to make it a game, make it a race, go faster, see how far you can go. Because I know 
alone, I will do that too. But when I'm hiking with family, I have to pace at their pace. Or I'll walk ahead and then turn around and walk back and walk with them again and slow and go. That makes it yours again and your hormones. So I want you to really think about that. Okay. So illustrating that this title of the podcast, how much exercise is enough exercise in menopause is your typical question. But remember that the question just might be for many of you listening, are you getting enough exercise or the question is this, are you doing too much exercise? Okay. So let's dive into Kate's question, but I want to be sure and clear that in response to her, I don't think she's doing too much because if she was, she would be volunteering some more information in her question, something like this. So she would have volunteered that she's come up against an obstacle. She's too tired. She's gaining weight. I'll go into that in a second. But here's the thing. When it comes to exercise, you want that Goldilocks amount, the sweet spot, the just right amount, but that for you is a moving target. It's not the same as mine. It's not the same for me today as it was six months ago or a year ago. It's not going to be the same for you today as it might be in a year or was last year. So we really have to learn how to blueprint this. That's why when I teach the After 50 Fitness Formula for Women, the course and spinoffs from that in our Flipping 50 membership, what I'm doing is giving you, and if this is true, then here's your first step. And it's like filling out those quizzes we did as teenagers in Teen Beat Magazine, Tiger Beat Magazine. You answer yes, answer yes, and it's, okay, go this way. You answered no. Oh, well then here. And then you go on to the next question. Similarly, so we look at what's going on for you, your status, your hormones. So I want you to think about if something is right for you or not, we first have to determine whether any of the things that Kate asked me, whether they're appropriate for you or not. So you have signs and symptoms potentially that you're either in balance or that you have an imbalance. For instance, you can barely get up in the morning. You're up, but you're not fully functioning for hours. You've gained weight doing the same things you used to do, and now you can't get it off. And the more you try, the worse it gets. You have mood swings, energy dips and drops and peaks and valleys and total brain fog. You can't sleep at night, even though you're exhausted. That wired and tired, it's called, feeling. Those are just four of the examples of really hormonal fluctuations that, you know, hopefully you didn't check all the boxes. That was not the goal here, but you might have. But it's not just a matter of time, okay? So I want you to be sure that when we talk strength training, it's not a matter of time. And we can turn that around to the analogy of, you know how everybody, every age really right now is being encouraged to do interval training. Especially you, my friends, when I'm talking to you, interval training is super supportive for fat burning If and only if you go through that checklist and you don't have any of those, if you can barely get up in the morning, no, you shouldn't be doing interval training. If you've gained weight doing the same thing and now you can't get it off and the more you try, first, you probably need to go back to just resting and restoring. Then maybe, yes, small, short interval training. Mood swings, total brain fog. We need to restore that first. Can't sleep at night, even though you're exhausted. We need to restore that first. Then yes, potentially high intensity interval training. But when we talk interval training, we're not talking about, okay, we need to do an hour long aerobics class, right? Interval training is hard. 
And that means you should be able to and wanting to walk away in 20 minutes and say, yeah, that was enough. Not be saying, but is that enough? No. If you're still asking me that, it's not. But it's not about time. It's about intensity. And you didn't go hard enough. So really got to make this really, really clear. So whether it's your racing upstairs when you're doing your intervals, whether it's your swimming as hard as you can when you're doing your intervals, whether it's you're in the water jogging, either in the low end or in a deep end with an aqua belt on, or you're on a rowing machine or you're boxing or you're running and you're sprinting. Any mode of exercise can be an interval training exercise. And you've got to find one where you can go hard enough that you are breathless. I mean, hands on your knees. I have to bend over and breathe and catch my breath. If you're not there, it's not high intensity intervals and it won't help remove the fat. But remember that short bits of time when you're talking interval training because it's high quality exercise. We don't go longer, right? Similarly, with strength training, the way we gauge intensity there is not breathlessness, it's not heart rate, but it is how many can you lift. Now, unfortunately, there's a lot of factors that come into play with how much can you lift because least of all me, I don't want you to get hurt on the way to getting stronger. That wouldn't make any sense. So we've got to take into consideration, first of all, if you're a beginner, we all start with light weights and work our way up. That happens over weeks, actually months. So it's probably going to take at least eight to 10 weeks to reach your maybe maintenance level of strength. We'll we'll all peak at some point where we're feeling like, okay, if I go any heavier, I'm going to feel pretty vulnerable and we don't want you to go there. And that's especially true if you're at home. You may run into the obstacle of, you know, I could buy heavier weights, but then I'm by myself. I don't feel real comfortable lifting them over my head. And I'm talking only when you're doing that, let's say lying down, you're lifting them over your nose, right? Not necessarily do I recommend lifting heavy weights up shoulder over the shoulders when you're in an upright position. But those kinds of things are not about is 30 minutes enough. The question is, can you lift a weight that is heavy enough for the exercises you're choosing for the speed or lack of speed? So the speed or the slowness that you're going and the sequence or order of those exercises, the combination of all those things will potentially determine whether you can reach muscular fatigue at the end of every set. So let's look at sets for a minute. The question is, do you reach muscular fatigue at the end of each and every one of them? Because my thinking is, just like with someone who's doing interval training, if someone finishes a 20 or 25 minute interval training set and says, is that enough? (laughs) they did not work hard enough because they should be wanting to go home right now and not do any more. And so it is with strength training. If someone says, is that enough, that 30 minutes? I'm thinking that if you don't feel that was enough, it wasn't enough. Something about it. If you're able, your joints will tolerate more weight. Maybe it's time to increase your weight, but it may be at your sets. So let's talk about that. What can be done in 30 minutes? In the most typical example of sets of exercise, there are often two or three sets of a certain number of repetitions of exercises, but there could also be one set. Now, that's talked about much less often in the research, except with beginners. However, even if you are a beginner, you've ever been a beginner, my guess is that if you've ever gone to a gym or you've worked with a personal trainer, instead of doing one set, what they suggested is you do lighter weight and you'll do still two or three sets. 
and potentially you could not sit down the next day. Am I right or am I right? You were so sore because you did really too much too soon. We don't want that kind of so sore you can't sit down. And I know sometimes in our lives we think, oh, that's so good. I must be really working those muscles, but really what you've done is a lot of damaging and micro tears and you have to recover so much that you really kind of start all over again. So not good to get that sore, but beginners should and could start with one single set a couple times a week. They might progress very quickly to the second week doing two sets, but still that lightweight As they progress again, they might just do those two sets with slightly heavier weight and again, go back and forth so that they're alternating either more sets, more repetitions or fewer repetitions with heavier weight and climbing, teeter-tottering back and forth, changing one variable. But there's nothing wrong with one set, even when you're advanced. Think of this, a single set of three to six repetitions to fatigue. That means the weight is very heavy. Now for you and I, if we're exercising at home, that's probably going to be hard to accomplish. But there's been research recent years, probably within the last five to 10, that is accumulating. There's still not a lot of it. For women over 40, volume can be very important. And so one example of that is a single set of, say, 35 or 36 repetitions. Within that single set, there may be even a little bit of rest, micro rest. Within, say, six repetitions, there's a little bit of rest. And then you go on and you continue and you continue and you continue until you do 35 total and then you're done and you won't do that set again. Now, I only give you those examples for illustration's sake, but the question is how much exercise could you get done in 30 minutes? It really depends on how organized your plan is, how valuable, how on target is it with your goals and the ability to reach fatigue. The point I'm making is reaching fatigue with, say, nine different exercises repeated for a total of 27 sets could be done in 30 minutes easily. That's quite a bit of successful muscle fatiguing, right? So here's how that would look. I would take three exercises. I would rotate through them one, two, three one, two, three, one, two, three, and then I would move on to the next set of three exercises and then do that one last time. Taking about a minute for each exercise, knowing exactly where you're going next, the setup and transition from one exercise to the next doesn't need to take longer than a few seconds. You can do one of those three exercise sets within 10 minutes easily. That means in 30 minutes, just what I pointed out, you've got nine different exercises and you're going to do 27 total sets when you do them that way. You can successfully reach muscle fatigue then 27 times. Is that a valuable exercise? A valuable workout? I would say so, but it doesn't have to be based on time. If you took one of those sets of three exercises. On a very busy day, that's all you did. That's enough for staying consistent and stimulating major muscle groups. Now, if we stimulate more muscle groups in each workout, is that more valuable for metabolism? Potentially, yes. But what is the number one obstacle? Can you guess for most of us exercising. While we're at home and we've learned how to adapt, it's time. So if you can exercise in a very efficient, effective way in 30 minutes and do another 30 minutes, slightly different workout another day of the week, but still make it and keep it short so that you use similar 
metabolism stimulating exercises, but not exactly the same ones or not in the same order, then you will be making a lot of progress in a very little amount of time. So what I'd really like for you to be asking is, are you doing the right sequences? Are you using the right weights? And if you feel you can't go any heavier, how can we manipulate the timing of the exercise that you're doing? A lot of people think more repetitions must be better. Not so true. Sometimes fewer and really slowing down. So I want you to do this with me. So if I tell you that the time dedicated to a single repetition is actually the average of about six seconds, one to two seconds to lift, three to four seconds to lower, that's good control. So we call that, say, if you were pushing a dumbbell up, lying on your back for a chest press, one to two seconds, and then you were going to lower it in three to four seconds, that's a slow, controlled, but not super slow. Now, if the weight you're using, you can't reach fatigue doing that in, say, 15 repetitions, then I would suggest you slow down. Change the tempo so that you're lifting that weight in, say, four counts, You hold it at the top, two counts, and then you lower it down in, say, six counts. Now, how long has that taken? Did you do the math? That was four and two and six, 12 seconds. We just doubled your time under tension. That, my friends, will make holding the same weight feel very, very different. And it can be a very effective and safe way to take those same weights in the living room right now and get a whole different workout with them. So there you have it. You have to be patient. You have to be willing to take the time to count that out or at least get a good feel for slowing down. But 30 minutes can be enough. It just makes sure that you have the right weight, you have the right exercises, You have the right sequence of exercises and you're playing with the right protocol. Now, if your eyes are rolling back in your head and you're wondering, that's a lot of variables. How do I do that? I can cover you for 10 days. So jump in, try the 10 day hot, not bother challenge. And this is best if you are kind of in limbo, what you're doing right now is not working. And you really wonder, where do I start? I need a fresh start. Maybe I need to clear my head of all the kind of clutter and the ideas and the moving from Instagram to YouTube and Facebook and all of the experts saying something different. Get that cleared out of your head and get a little bit more clear on which exercise specifically affects my hormones and how does it work so that you understand and can connect the dots So it's easier to get committed again to a regular program and easier to hang in there when you don't get that quick fix, but you know, you already feel better for having done it. And you know that if you hang in there, you're going to continue to get even more results. That's what we're all about. So I'm going to give you an audio every day, whisper in your ear what the workout of the day has to do with the effects on your hormones and give you that workout so you have zero decision fatigue, my friend, for 10 days about what to do. Your one question you have to answer is, what time every morning am I going to do the exercise? Give yourself 45 minutes, clear your calendar, and promise you'll do that. I'll deliver the rest. I'll put the link in the show notes. Kate, thanks so much for asking this question. So my answer, bottom line, is 30 minutes enough? Absolutely. When you're doing the right thing with the right weights and the right timing for you and your hormone status right now. What are you waiting for? Let's start flipping 50 today.